Welcome to Our View. I am the producer and host, Lori Hull Smithers. And this show airs on Channel 17, Sunday at 3.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m., Monday at 7 a.m., Thursday at 8.30 p.m., and Saturday at 5.30 p.m., among other times. Now, today, I have done something unusual. I have asked a guest from two shows ago to come on again, John Orland, because he had so many interesting stories to tell of show business that we didn't get to the first time. <clears throat> we did talk the first time, John, and I'll start there, about both of us being on the faculty for Lee Strasberg. I was a his under, I taught understanding the method, acting, youth, and a, a workshop, a director, writers, actors, teachers, and you taught screenwriting. Yes, I taught screenwriting. Do you want to tell how you happened to be on his faculty, and then we'll go on from there? Yes. We got your early life on the other show. Sure. <laughs> no, I'd be happy right. to. Well, uh, I had a dear friend and actually a collaborator on a screenplay, uh, Rick Blum. Oh, yes, I knew him. And, uh, he taught there, too, He didn't taught he? there, too. Yes, and I knew him. what that. happened is uh, I was his guest uh, several times, mm -hmm. and then I forget the individual circumstances, but Rick was uh, leaving uh, Los Angeles, and he asked me to come in and uh, think about uh, being his replacement. So I had an interview and I ended up being his replacement uh, for his screenwriting class. Uh-huh, and how long did you teach there? I was there actually I, a good three years, maybe longer. So we were there the same time. I'm sure we were. I uh, was his senior faculty member for 12 years, but there were times when I'd go back and be a professor in the Midwest, and then my daughter, Diane Hall, would teach my classes. Yes. So sometimes I was just there in the summers. I remember one particular uh, instance, and maybe uh, you will either recall it or not, but Dustin Hoffman was a guest of yes. Lee Strasberg. Yes, you told that the last time. Yes, and I was there right, and talked to right. uh, Dustin. I don't know if you were there at that time or not. I think I'm, I met Dusty another time, mm -hmm. uh, but he came in every once in a while. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, another thing we mentioned last time was about the big black tower at Universal. And you never told how you got there. Well... <laughs> Can I explain first to our viewing audience what was the big yes. black tower? The, the, uh, the big uh, black <laughs> tower was the foreboding castle mm -hmm. uh, that housed all of the executives uh, in shirts and ties and suits. Uh, for Universal Studios. And uh, it was something that most of the employees, actually, of Universal were not that fond of the big black tower <laughs> because it represented power mm -hmm. and authority. Mm -hmm. Now, some years before, uh, I had applied for a job in the mailroom at <laughs> Universal. Must have been when you first came to yes. LA or Hollywood. Yes, uh -huh. and uh, I did not get the job. <laughs> One of the reasons was I was not a college graduate, ah. and you had to be a college graduate to work in the mailroom. So let's uh, fast forward <laughs> a few years, and I was very successful as an independent uh, producer director. Mm -hmm. I did many shows, I did the Art Link Letter. Art Linkletter show, his uh, house party show, all of the remotes. Oh, I loved his interview of kids. Yes, that wonderful, was so funny. wonderful show. Yes. And um, I, I directed documentaries for uh, NBC, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I decided uh, when I was reaching my late 20s that I would be over the hill. <laughs> if I didn't move into feature films. <laughs> and I had to move into feature films. and. I started calling agents, and no one would talk to me. Um, I would only get scripts from people who were on the periphery. And you have to remember, this was before the days of photocopying. Mm -hmm. So there weren't that many good scripts circulating because they were all mimeographed. 
So you didn't have, or the internet, you didn't have the, the massive volume of scripts in circulation. Yeah, I remember last time we talked how your wife, Marsha, helped you with your script. Yes. And I talked about how my book on acting and directing called Strasberg's Method, I was helped by my daughter and exactly. husband-to-be. Yes. So we're grateful for people who have helped us along oh, the way. So <laughs> right. what happened was I called this one agency mm -hmm. and the phone operator, there, there was a, a switchboard operator, this is in the day of switchboard operators, asked me what I was looking for. And believe it or not, to this day, I can't tell you what I'm looking for. I know it when I see it. So she started to tell me the story, and I said, can I get a copy of the script? And this is where you met Spielberg, yes. Steven Spielberg, right. So I, uh, I got a copy of the script, and I loved it, and I was told a, a young man from Long Beach was attached, and I happened to be the neighbor of a man who worked at Universal Studios. And through my Spanish maid and his Spanish maid <laughs> and my son and his son, they were both newborns at the time, mm -hmm. uh, I began to have a, 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 a relationship with him, just on the periphery. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, I got this, uh, the screenplay to Frank Price, and uh, he read it, and the next thing I know, uh, Universal is courting me, and they made a deal with me over one weekend uh, I did it without an agent, and bingo, I was in the Black Tower. <laughs> Were you lucky? <laughs> I was really lucky. Yes. Uh, it's like all of the stars were aligned <laughs> or something. So I would not recommend uh, this trail to anyone else. In fact, <laughs> everyone who does uh, uh, enter the motion picture business has a different story of how they've gotten to where they are. Yes, and, yes. And uh, it's not like being a doctor, there's a path, or, or being uh, an accountant or attorney. It's totally unique. It depends upon a lot of luck, but uh, there is a saying that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Oh, yes. I remember showing my book to Strasberg when it was just a PhD dissertation, and he approved it. And I was so delighted because then it was, you know, published as a book on acting and yes. directing. And it was just shortly before he died that he, and he said to me, you're setting yourself up as a, an authority on the method. And I said, yes, I am. <laughs> 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 and he just laughed, you know. Mm. <laughs> so uh, one does have to take advantage of all opportunities, you know. That's for sure. And you also had an opportunity of being on the set of The Night of the Iguana. Is that correct? Yes. I worked for a company, uh, David Walper Productions. Mm -hmm. Oh, very well known. And uh, what happened was I got a phone call from the production department that they were replacing a uh, a crew person, a cameraman, and a camera assistant who was in Puerto Vallarta, and they were thinking about sending me to Puerto Vallarta. Now, I had no idea where Puerto Vallarta <laughs> was. It wasn't on a map. Uh, I thought originally that Puerto Vallarta might be located in Spain mm -hmm. because it, it had that kind of sounding name. It wasn't until I spoke to a telephone operator again. <laughs> and the telephone operator, because I was trying to find long distance, where is Puerto Vallarta located? Mm -hmm. And of course, there were no phones in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> but the telephone operator said, I just saw in Life magazine uh, a write-up and story about Night of the Iguana and Puerto Vallarta is in Mexico. So I had about three days to get all of my shots. At the time, um, you had to get certain shots uh, that were uh, required by the World Health Organization. And there was a little booklet. And when you went to see a doctor and you got the shot, 
they would initial in the box that you receive the mm -hmm. shot for typhoid and tetanus. In and order to leave the country. And to, yeah, and to come back. Yeah. Oh, so yes, yes. So, yes. So that you would not mm -hmm. uh, bring back um, a contagious disease. Mm -hmm. Now, what also happened is this was just a few days after John Kennedy was assassinated. Mm. So 1965. Yes. Yes. So I had uh, a great fear that I was leaving the country and maybe the Soviet Union was going to attack us. <laughs> so oh, uh, I was very, very uh, concerned about my wife at the time, just leaving her And your at two home. children? Uh, well, no, this is way before I had oh, any I children. See. I was, mm -hmm. I guess, what you call a young whippersnapper okay. or something. <laughs> so. Um, we discussed it and, and she was okay. And because we didn't realize that Puerto Vallarta was in a jungle, <laughs> she packed black mohair suits for me. Oh, gee. Uh, to, to wear and ties and, and uh, because I'm, I'm going to be on the set of a major motion picture. Sure. Well, when I arrived in Puerto Vallarta, and that wasn't that easy because Puerto Vallarta had a tiny airport, and uh, the plane from Los Angeles could not land in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, we flew to Mazatlan, and then uh, took a propeller plane over the mountain. Now this was a job with NBC? To no, this was for David Walper. Well, but this is for David Walper yes, to shoot. Yes, for NBC, the for Hollywood NBC. and the Stars, I get it. Okay. which was narrated by Joseph Cotton. Uh-huh. Okay. So we um, had to change planes. And he wanted you to shoot the filming in yes. of Night uh, of the Iguana. Yes, I along with okay. a producer-director mm -hmm. and uh, another uh, camera person. Mm -hmm. So it was a very small crew. <laughs> and when uh, I arrived, of course, and stepped out of the airplane, it was like going into an oven. It was the, I'll never forget how the, the heat and humidity just almost knocked me down. And it you had like one of your suits on? No, <laughs> no, I just had a nice shirt and, well, that and was pants. Smart. Thank God my, my, my suits were in my suitcase. <laughs> and uh, of all things, uh, Elizabeth Taylor is at the airport because it's, it's very close to uh, Thanksgiving and Michael Wilding uh, he was on the plane with me, and he, I believe, brought a couple of their children down. They had two sons. Yes. yes. So yes. Michael Wilding was on the plane with me, the two sons. Elizabeth Taylor was waving to the plane <laughs> as we arrived. We had to circle uh, once to make sure no animals were on the runway. <laughs> it was dusk, and I believe they lit torches along the runway to illuminate it. And it was, it was a very, very um, theatrical uh, kind of welcome to Puerto Vallarta. Now, I stayed in Puerto Vallarta, and my hotel room had no screens in the windows. Oh, my. And the mosquitoes <laughs> were beyond belief beyond belief. Did you get something to put over you, like no, a No, no. <laughs> I, 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 I was given a, a can of DDT, mm. and my producer was my roommate, and in the middle of the night, he wakes me up, and I'm scratching, and he's scratching, and he hands me the DDT, and he's absolutely naked, and he hands me the DDT, <laughs> and he does like a, a, an umbrella where he does a 360-degree turn. And I'm spraying him like I'm spraying a car and, and painting a car up and down, up and down as he's twirling. Then I handed him the can of DDT, and I did the same thing. And he sprayed me up and down, up and down, up and down. How terrible. <laughs> with oh, a can gee. of DDT. My life, probably my life expectancy is uh, maybe a few years shorter than <laughs> what it would be otherwise. Well, we hope not. No, no. <laughs> and then on the set, um, I had to, we shot film, of course, and on the set I had to reload magazines 
take out the exposed film and put in the fresh film. And the way you did it on set is you had what was called a changing bag, where you put your, your each arm in this black bag that is light proof, and then there's a zipper behind it. You open the zipper, you put the film in, you put the magazine in, and, and then zip it back up and do everything by feel. Now, of course, the mosquitoes are attacking me. So I have a young Mexican gentleman who is my face slapper because <laughs> I, I can't stand being bitten and they're <laughs> biting my neck and they're biting my face and I'm in the bag and I can't, if I take out my, uh, my arms, the light will leak in through the opening. So he's there and I, not for the microphone, but I don't want to do it too loud, but he's, he's <laughs> killing the mosquitoes on my face. And that's how you got that wonderful footage yes. that we're going to show <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that he slapped in the face. And then <laughs> okay. I also, I also, um, it was so hot and they had Coca-Cola and uh, in, in a, in, in a uh, ice box with ice. And of course you're not supposed to drink the water. And I'm drinking Coca-Cola bottles of Coke, you know, one after another. and. I'm chewing on the ice. Oh no! And oh yes, you, and that's a no-no. Oh, you probably got the And I got the, the, I got the oh. Teristas, and oh. I was sicker than a dog. I can imagine. And I would have to squat wherever I had to squat, look around to make sure no iguanas were coming up on me. <laughs> <laughs> and then to get to the surf, just briefly, or to get to the location, which was Mesmaloya. You had to take a dugout canoe in Puerto Vallarta through the surf, but it wasn't that And that's what high. you did with the Wildings and Elizabeth No, no, there. no. This is what I did every day as a oh, crew person. Oh, every day. And, wow. and took the dugout canoe to a, a boat. It was about a 35-foot boat. Took the boat to Mesmaloya, and the, because there's a tidal surge there, you have to go to, you can't tie up to a pier they built to a raft that's tied to the pier, unload everything onto the raft, then climb up the ladder on the pier and carry the equipment up, and then you've arrived in Ms. Maloya to begin your day's work. So I think that's our cue to show the clip that you, of some of the footage you took there. So Mark, if, if you can uh, bring it up, uh, we'd like to show some of John's footage from the Night of the Iguana. <laughs> that of a defrocked minister adrift in Mexico. Ava Gardner plays the flamboyant owner of a tourist hotel on the outskirts of a resort town, while Deborah Carr assumes the role of a gentle, mysterious spinster. Sue Lyon, whose previous screen role was of the nymphette Lolita, is cast as a precocious American teenager. The backbone of the production is, of course, the crew, comprised of six Hollywood specialists and 65 technicians from studios in Mexico City. The MGM Seven Arts production of Iguana will cost more than $3 million, requiring a big but carefully drawn budget that producer Ray Stark must administer with Houston's cooperation. And, uh, back in New York, it's quite a different thing. They say, when is it going to blow up? When is the volcano going to explode? What's happening between Avery and Richard? What's Sue Lyon doing? I try to tell him it's like a Boy Scout picnic. As a matter of fact, you've called it right on the nose. We're uh, two days ahead of schedule on it. Not owing to my good offices, uh, nearly so much as, as to the uh, to the uh, crew, the Mexican crew. I've never known a crew to function better and more efficiently than, than this bunch of boys. They're proud of themselves and they're proud of each other. And um, they're ready, it's John. Been just about that they're ready for the next shot. So we're going to, to directing a picture is rather like being at the director of an orchestra. You've uh, got to bring a number of components together. It's a process of, of synchronization and, and harmonizing. All the various elements must uh, finally combine into making the immediate scene at hand. And as you go to make 
each scene. The best rule that I know of for myself or for any other director is that each scene as you go to make it should be the most important scene of the film. I've been asked how I direct, direct actors, tell them what to do. I direct as little as possible. These people are all creative talents. When I get to know an actor, this is the ideal. You can talk a kind of code to him, and he picks up instantly. You get on the same wavelength, and he knows what you mean. Could I, could I not have my famous boy? Fantastic. Uh, the last one, last one. <laughs> Richard, Deborah, Lee. John, we're ready. Richard, Deborah, we're ready if you are. Silencio, por favor. Todo, silencio. Sound rolling. Hold it, hold it. Luis, 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 pide silencio, pide silencio, se va a tomar ya. Pide silencio, pide silencio, se va a tomar cambio. That should be something of an eye opener for you, Mr. Shannon. Fantastic. Yes, Mr. Shannon, fantastic is what it is. You were building your nest, and you didn't even know it. Goodbye. Let me, uh, let me drive you into town. No, thank you. I'd prefer to walk. What you could do for me, though, is have my luggage sent in after me. Oh, I almost forgot. I found this in the pocket of my smock this morning when I was packing. Uh, I, I, I want you to have it. Oh, I couldn't possibly accept, Mr. Shannon. Now, take it, please. Uh, hog it. It'll pay your way back to the States. Uh, that's a real amethyst, so don't let the local loan shark give you less than 1,800 pesos for it. Its, uh, it's, it's value has been established over the years. Very well, Mr. Shannon. I'll send the pawn ticket back to you so that you can redeem it. Miss Jokes. Uh, I want to look at you. I, I want to remember your face in case I, I don't see you again. And I... I doubt that I shall. I was pleased to see Deborah Carr in that because I met her, and she's a lovely lady, and I met her when she played the mother of my daughter, Diane Hull, in Kazan's The Arrangement. And Deborah said, Diane is spoiled. She'll never find a better director than Elia Kazan, who directed the arrangement. Now, uh, w we just have about four minutes left, so I'm w w you tell us what you want to tell us, either about this footage, or maybe you also want to tell us about your new production company before we sign off. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just um, uh, tell you a little bit more about the uh, Night of the Iguana okay. uh, production and my experience. Uh, when I came back to the United States, I had all of the film for the, uh, from the shoot. And I don't know what the, uh, what the law was at the time about footage, mm -hmm. uh, because I, I, I think there were certain taxes and whatever. And uh, I had my suitcase and then I had another bag. And I had the head of production for Night of the Iguana, one of the production managers, accompany me. Now, I have all the footage, and I'm going through customs in Mexico, <laughs> and they're searching my suitcase and going through everything and checking it out. And I have this bag. Well, they didn't ask to look at the bag. And I was, sweating, I was sweating bullets because you know, I was told to take the bag through customs, and I didn't know what the um, what the repercussions would uh, would be. So I got back to the United States, and um, we developed the film. Um, I had never used that camera before, so I was also in charge of uh, setting up the cameras and threading them. Well, you had some good shots. Yes, and, and some good information 
about you know how the director directed and uh, from Tennessee Williams. Yes, uh, there was a wonderful yes. director who was there, Bill Cronick, mm -hmm. who was actually the director of the mm -hmm. show, and he was very very good. And um, I did sweat bullets again when the film went into the lab because I thought the film was going to be developed as we went along. I didn't know that all of the film would uh, be developed at one time, and I was responsible for that. Uh, so uh, it turned out very well, and um, it was an experience I will never forget. I'm uh, just currently working on a feature film. Uh, it is a, a period piece. Uh, set 10 years after the Civil War. Oh, really? It's called Sarasota, and it's set in Sarasota, Florida. Mm -hmm. I and remember we talked about yes, that last and, time. Yes, uh, and since uh, we last spoke, I was on a location scout uh, in New Orleans, Louisiana, oh. uh, Savannah, uh, Georgia, and Charleston, South Carolina. I have often taught in New Orleans. My daughter and I teach acting workshops, mm -hmm. you know, and we're going to London in October. Yes. And they have a wonderful AFTRA SAG chapter there. And the last time we taught there, we were sponsored by that uh, oh, chapter. very nice. For, you know, extras or people that you might yes. want to cast down there. My son lives there. That's where mm. my great granddaughter is, my first great granddaughter. <laughs> So uh, we had a, a, a very uh, positive experience. Uh, the director of our movie is Jerry Jameson, mm -hmm. and uh, he has a movie coming out September 18th called Captive, and Paramount is releasing it, and it's going to be in 18, 800 theaters uh, nationwide. Wonderful. Do you have any idea when you're going to be in New Orleans shooting? Well, I think actually we probably will shoot in Georgia because okay. we really need a, um, a coastal location. Mm -hmm. And we went to Georgia to look at antebellum uh, mansions. Oh, they have but, some wonderful yes, mansions. Yes, but they're throughout the south. They're Savannah located. in particular. Savannah has some wonderful ones. Yes, I've gone I visited uh, quite a few of them. Yes, yes. Along with our production designer, John DeCure. Mm -hmm. And John has been in the business a long time. He worked on Ghostbusters and a lot of other shows, and uh, we're very happy. So I think we just have a few minutes left. We're done taping? <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you, John. This has been very interesting. Our time went so fast.